information I wish to share with you today is, I hope it will be like this story. My sister's friend, Jim, was fishing 20 miles out uh, in, the, in the ocean, down in the Gulf, and saw this little speck in the sky coming, uh, watched it somewhat, and uh, it didn't grow bigger, actually. It, it came towards them, but it wasn't increasing in size significantly. And uh, all, all of a sudden, out of the sky dropped this little sparrow down on the canopy of their fishing boat, just a little tongue hanging out and panting, 20 miles out, the sparrow. And I, the, the mom who has a child who she is not able to teach, and, and the prospect of turning that child over to someone else to teach is Nigh on to death itself to think that you would do that to your child. Um, I hope and I believe that the information I can share with you today will be like the little sparrow landing on the canopy on the boat. And I guess that little sparrow is well taken care of with all the people giving it water and whatever. So uh, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know. He cares for me. So that's that's what I believe we will find out here today. How do we teach this labeled child? And, and in fact, is his label really the problem? What is the problem? So with the help of the Lord and you, let's get right into this. Other one. Let's do an activity together that demonstrates the answer to this question of uh, what is full spectrum neurological response method of instruction? Full spectrum neurological response. Now we borrow that term from the nutritional business. Full spectrum vitamin would mean it has everything in it that we need. The second question we'll deal with is the fragmented. What is fragmented neurological response instruction? So the key is, this, the instruction is neurological because learning is neurological. That's not one of those duh kinds of things, but it, it is within our brains, the neurology that we do not see, but that is actual operational as much as our arms are. The full, do we use the fullness of it? Or do we just use a fragment of it? Let's do number one together. This activity demonstrates using the wholeness, the fullness of the neurological capacity we have for learning. Each individual, as a matter for a boy or a girl, or a left-handed or right-handed, and all these theoretical things that supposedly uh, influence how we are to learn. Uh, the, this, is, this is the human brain as God designed it. So, uh, I will say and do something in a connected way. I am drawing an irregular shape. Now, I would like you to say those same words and do as you say, but Here's the, here's the key. Don't visualize what I just modeled for you. I, I just did that to demonstrate how I would say words and do what I say. I am drawing an irregular shape. That's the say as I do. Say and do together. What I'd like you to do is listen to your words rather than attend to what your visual memory is trying to tell you. Pay attention exactly to your words. Don't think or copy or uh, anything other than that because that's a, a key issue in how we learn. So say I am drawing an irregular shape as you do that. I am drawing an irregular shape. shape. And make it big if you'd like. You know? Now from now on 
I'm not going to model for you. I would like you to say, though, the words are, I am drawing a horizontal intersecting line. Think of those words. Say them so you get them fixed in your mind. I am drawing a horizontal intersecting line. Think of the vocabulary of that. All right. Now, say them again and do what you said. I am drawing, drawing a horizontal, horizontal intersecting line. line. So, did, what do you think? Did we, did we say and do in a connected way, and is it accurate? And as your teacher, if I came by and, and, and of course, if I'm teaching you at home, I know that what you said is what you did, yes, or what you said is what you did, no. That's the only true way to diagnose understanding. Now say this, I am drawing a vertical intersecting line. I am drawing a vertical intersecting line. Very good. Now point to your drawing, or you can point to mine because the, it would be both effective. And say, I have four quadrants. Say that. I have four quadrants. Say, one. One. Two. Two. And follow my direction as I point. So you do it as in the order that I'm doing it. Three. Three. Four. Four quadrants. Now say this. In quadrant one, I am drawing a mouth. In quadrant one, I am drawing a mouth. When we say what we're doing, as we do it, we are developing oral language, vocabulary, sentence sense. That's the only way to truly show I am developing my language skill. I am saying and doing. I am demonstrating. And I am, my whole brain is working to do that. Say in quadrant two, I am drawing an ear. In quadrant two, I am drawing an ear. See, we don't say and then do. We say as we do. Say and do. In quadrant three, I am drawing a pencil. In quadrant three, I am drawing a pencil. Now, if I was teaching a student this really important activity about how his brain works, so he understands this is his job to train or not train, educate, to educate his brain. It's his job. I can't do it for him. He's the one who has to say and do. See, then I would be really concerned that he understood that, that what he says must be what he does. And I would also consult him that it's not about art. See, that's just a visual assessment. Say, in quadrant four, I am drawing an eye. In quadrant four, I am drawing an eye. 